If we had some population with the categorical variable and we knew the proportion of the population that satisfied that category, then that proportion of the population is in fact the probability of us picking one of those individuals at, at random and then being in the category. If we took a sample of size n, then we would have a binomial probability distribution. So let x represent the number of successes that we get in a sample of size n. So we could have zero successes, one, two, three, all the way up to n. I'm representing that, that binomial probability distribution, showing a little up line measuring the probability associated with each one of these number of successes. In a binomial probability distribution, we know that the mean of this distribution is going to be n, the sample size, times p, the probability of success, or the proportion of the population that's in that category. We also know that the standard deviation of this distribution is going to be the square root of n times p times q, where q is the probability of failure, or 1 minus p. Now, generally, we don't know this population proportion. We're going to try and understand that population proportion by taking a sample, say of size n, and when we do that, then of course this binomial probability distribution exists even though we can't create it. So we take a sample of size n, we have our successes, and therefore we can calculate the sample proportion, p hat, as r divided by n. That would be a point estimate for this uh, population parameter that we're looking for. Of course, if we took a different sample, another sample of size n, we would get a different p hat. And so therefore, there is a random variable here of p hat. It depends on the random experiment of selecting a random sample of n items from the population and calculating the proportion. We'd like to know the distribution of all the p hats. We looked at every possible sample of size n, calculated the p hat for each of those samples. We'd like to know this distribution. So essentially what we're doing is looking at this distribution, which is a frequency distribution, and converting that to a relative frequency distribution so everything over here could be converted to values over here by dividing by n. So the mean of all of these sample proportions is going to be this mean divided by n. So the mean of the sample proportions is going to be p, and the standard deviation of the p hats is going to be this amount divided by p. Might not hurt to just take a quick minute and show how to do that. The square root of n times p times q divided by n is n, the square root of n times p times q divided by the square root of n squared because the square root of n squared is the same as n. And then because of the property of square root in fraction, this becomes the square root of all of that, n times p times q divided by n squared this n on top cancels out with one of the n's on the bottom, and we're left with the square root of p times q divided by n. So the mean of the p hats is p, and the standard deviation of the p hats is the square root. Furthermore, it has been observed if n times p is greater than 5 and n times q is greater than 5, then this distribution is going to be normally distributed. So the high point of this distribution is going to be at the value p. If we go to p plus a standard deviation and p minus a standard deviation, then the density of the distribution at those points, or the y value of the, of the graph at those points, will be about 60% of, uh, of this high point. And a property of normal distributions is that the distribution will be concave down within one standard deviation and concave up outside of that. So there's two of the three distributions in the three distribution diagram for proportions. The third distribution is found by taking this normal distribution and converting it to a standard normal distribution. A standard normal distribution has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. It's a normal distribution, so its high point will be at the mean. And at one standard deviation above the mean and one standard deviation below the mean, the height will be about 60% of the height at the mean. 
It will be concave down within one standard deviation and concave up outside of one standard deviation. Now we know how to convert things from this normal distribution to this one. These are just the z scores or how far each point is away from the mean. So this mean gets converted to zero. One standard deviation above the mean gets converted to one. Minus one standard deviation above the mean gets converted to a minus one. And all of those conversions work by a particular formula. Let's say that we're looking at any p hat on this p hat axis. Maybe this one. I'd like to see where it's going to land up down here. It's going to be a little bit less than one standard deviation below the mean. The formula for that z val value is to find the p hat minus the mean. Find out how far it is away from the mean. In our picture it's going to be a negative value because anything less than the mean is going to be negative and anything greater than the mean is going to be positive. And then we want to divide that by this standard deviation. The standard deviation in this second distribution is so significant we're going to give it a special name. We'll call it the standard error. So the z value is the p hat minus the mean of this distribution divided by the standard deviation of this distribution and is therefore telling us how many standard deviations p hat is away from the mean, either positive or negative. So there's where the z value for our particular p hat will show up. This is the three distribution diagram for a proportion, one sample proportion. Understanding this, this three distribution diagram allows us to do hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. We'll use the three distribution diagram in a different way in each of those cases.